What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about the 2020 Corvette C8, but specifically we are going to talk about the high wing option for the mid-engine Corvette. Now, I know many people have quite different opinions when it comes to the high wing, and some people are genuinely lost on whether to buy the high wing or not, so my hope in today's video is to clarify some of the information we have, along with address a few of the concerns that many people have had so far. For those of you unaware, Chevrolet is now offering a high wing option that can be added to your new Corvette C8. This high wing option will set you back $1,150 and it is also a dealer installed option. This simply means that your car will be shipped without the option installed and then once it is received by your local dealership, they will do all of the work. Now, this has led to many people being upset because they don't feel that their new Corvette should have the rear fascia removed just after being built. This wing does not just simply bolt onto the back of the car, you do have to remove that rear fascia to access the area for the mounting hardware. If you do opt for the Z51 package, the holes for the wing will actually already be in place as they were there for your Z51 spoiler. So while some people may be upset by this, I would say that the reasoning for not installing it at the factory is due to it being possibly damaged during transit. GM also does already have car covers that help protect the car during transit, and these would actually have to be modified just because of the high wing. So in my honest opinion, I don't think that it's a huge deal that the option is dealer installed, but I'm sure there will be some individuals out there that have poor experiences at their dealerships. As far as performance goes for the high wing, we already know that the standard Z51 spoiler is not just for looks, and it does provide the car with up to 400 pounds of downforce. We do not have confirmation at this time on how much downforce the high wing provides us, just that it is noted by a GM engineer that it does provide more downforce than the Z51 spoiler. One thing to note is there are some similarities between the new high wing for the C8 versus the C7 ZR1's high wing. Furthermore, GM says that the ZR1 makes 1,000 pounds of downforce, so that may help as to hint on how well the C8 high wing will actually perform. And moving on from there, another thing to consider is both rear trunk access as well as visibility. ZR1 owners have noted to use their rear trunk, you will need to load and unload from the sides of the wing. This will stay true for the C8 with the high wing, as the length from the top of the wing to your rear trunk floor will actually be significantly further. So unless you're shack, loading and unloading larger items from the back of your car will be near impossible. I know this isn't a huge issue, but it is certainly something that you should think about if you drive your Corvette often. Trunk space does matter for a daily driver, and I got ridiculed pretty harshly in a previous video for saying trunk space in a Corvette matters, but I will continue to stick with this statement. As I mentioned, visibility is another thing to consider. The ZR1 again provides us a bit of insight on this. ZR1 owners have noticed some visibility loss, but not a large amount that would make the wing a dangerous addition. Furthermore, the Corvette C8 does come with a digital rearview mirror that looks down on the wing. A Corvette engineer cleared up this question a bit as to whether the wing would be in the way with saying that you would see the wing in your vision, but most of it would be looking down under the wing. You will see a bit above the wing, but for most of your perspective, it's going to be beneath the wing looking out. Finally, we get to styling, and honestly, this is just a matter of opinion. What one person thinks could be completely different from others. My opinion is, I think it looks cool, but it does take away from some of the classiness from the C8 if that is the look you're going for. I actually think that both the high wing or the no wing option look the best out of all the different three options. No wing gives the vet a very low, sleek, yet aggressive look that makes it hard not to notice. If you look at a McLaren 570S, you will notice how sleek the back of the car looks with no spoiler on it. As it does sit now, my car will come with a Z51 spoiler, but honestly, my hope is to either find a nice aftermarket spoiler that complements the car, or possibly just order the high wing from Chevrolet, as again, it's a dealer option that can be added later. That of course is something I will certainly keep you up to date on later once I do receive my C8 Corvette, so make sure you all have your bell notification on. 
Another thing I wanted to touch on was the confirmation of the convertible Corvette C8. I know most of you are probably already aware of this, but it is going to be debuted on October 2nd of this year. I know quite a few of my subscribers have been waiting for the convertible, and I think with Corvette finally offering a hardtop convertible, many people will be switching from their coupe purchases. We don't have pricing yet, but I have to say that the renderings that we have seen so far of the convertible in action look amazing. This car really is going to be one great car. I can't wait to review a convertible for you all on my channel. The last thing I wanted to show you in today's video was the final build of my Corvette C8. And I know we've been over this a few times, but I, this is actually the finalization that I sent in, and you'll actually see the build out that I got from my local dealer. As you can see from the price summary, my car is coming in at $85,310. So even after some scaling of my options back, I still have over $25,000 in options added, but I really feel like this car is going to be something special. So as we go through my build, you will see that I have chosen the torch red and I have included the 3LT package. Now, for a long time, I've been going back and forth on this, and I know the 2LT package would be just fine, but I've seen some really great things about the GT2 seats, which they do come standard with the 3LT package. It also has the carbon inserts behind the headrest, which is a nice touch. If I do end up making the switch after seeing the car next week when it comes to my local dealership, then I will be going with the 2LT package and GT1 seats. But for now, we're going to stick with the 3LT package. My other reasoning for this is the 3LT does jump you up to the Napa leather over the Mulan bonded leather. And really, there's nothing wrong with the Mulan leather, but Napa has that great rich full leather smell and makes the cabin feel just a bit nicer. I mean, even after being 10 years old, I still get compliments all the time on how nice my Audi R8 smells on the inside due to its full Napa interior. From there, we of course have to go with the torch red seat belts. I've also added the front lift system along with the interior carbon fiber package. I really do think the interior carbon is a bit steep, but I really love the carbon that is around the large digital dash, so that is what sold me on this option. If you are looking to keep to a budget, I think that this option is completely okay to skip on. I do have the magnetic selective ride control added to my car as well. Last thing added on this page is the red calipers to help match the exterior of the car. From there we have the wheels. This is where you all truly saved me. I had so many subscribers give me great feedback on what to do when I asked in a previous video, whether going with the Trident or the Carbon Flash. I was really, really stuck on this, and I decided to save my money and just go with the Carbon Flash wheels. The Black Trident just don't look good enough, in my opinion, to drop over $3,000 on. My hope is to find some really great aftermarket wheels to throw on my C8 with the money that I've saved. So I do truly want to thank you all so much for your great feedback. From there, you can of course see that I have the Z51 package added for five grand. Now, I did make a video over the Z51 package and all of its benefits and whether it is worth it to you. It was really popular, so make sure you check out that video. But I will say this, my hope is to really dive into the Z51 package in some of my next videos next year by tracking the car, testing out the suspension and various exercises, and then of course uploading those videos to share with you all. The final options I have is the carbon flash mirrors, which will help match the other carbon flash items on my car and then the engine appearance package. This is another option that I think a lot of people can really skip on and it's certainly not needed. I have two photos showing you with and without the package and I honestly think even without the carbon fiber in the engine bay, it looks really awesome. It's a very industrial look and I think a lot of people will probably skip on the appearance package. My reasoning for getting this is again, my R8 does have the rear bay lighting, and I think it's a really neat feature. If it's dark and you're walking out to your car, your engine bay will light up and it will show you the heart of your Corvette. Just a nice small little feature, but again, to each their own. Well everyone, that takes care of it for today's video. Please make sure if you enjoyed this video, you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, make sure that notification bell is hit. As always, you all take care, and I'll see you next video.